Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Midwest Premodern Championship. We are just getting started for round number two. I'm Michael Hoype. I'm joined by Brian Cole. Hi. All right. So we uh, we did a little bit of scouting, a little information, I guess, for the the players that were still playing. I saw a good number of of parfait. Yeah. And uh, decent number of parfait. Decent amount of dreadnought. I think. I did see an elves deck. I did. I did so. I saw Sam. I saw Sam playing against elves. Okay. I didn't see anyone playing Sly, but that also could have a bias because the Sly players were probably done by then. Um, we know there's at least one Goblins player. Uh, at least two. I know. At least two? Okay. But, yeah. So, yeah, that was, I was going to say, like, so originally BK had told me that Aaron was playing Parfait. Um, but That's what I thought. When but... I talked to him, he was saying that he's like, I'm not playing anything exciting. And he's like, yeah, but I'm playing the same thing as, as Adrian and, or, Oh, Will mm -hmm. and Will and Lester. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So he had insinuated that he's on the mono blue siphon lot. So that's what, what it is. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you talk about Charl? Because uh, the chat, so, chat was just saying this. But yeah. So we have a battle of two road warriors here. Everybody knows Aaron Dix, like, will go to any pre-modern tournament. You, you, you put a pre-modern tournament in, like, India. He's there, you know. <laughs> but Charl, like was so excited about our Midwest chefs. He's here from Florida. He just flew out to come battle at our event. And uh, it's great to see. I'm excited to see what he brought to the table. They're both 1-0 after the first round. I'll say, you definitely know you're crazy if you're flying from Florida to Wisconsin in winter. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't get Jared Satowski to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I'll, I'll just let them know that they can start whenever they're ready. Yeah, I think they're waiting for us. We got a, you know what? Um, when we mispaired the first round because somebody wasn't entered, but when I looked at the standing, when I looked at the pair up in the first round, this was the match I was going to pick for the okay. feature match. All right. So when I saw it happen round two with both of them one zero, I knew it was meant to be. It's just destiny. <laughs> yes. You have Aaron playing an island. I guess anyone like <laughs> that would be a, an abnormal thing. Typically, he comes playing fly, but uh, he's recently, I know, been playing other decks that he was playing Parfait and this Mono Blue Stifle Knot, which uh, kind of a lot the metagame has has shifted to. So, the flavor of the month. Yes, yes. We do have an island out of Charles, so. though. Oh, it could be we could have a mirror match. Could be a mirror. He could be. I, I'm trying trying to get a peek at his hand. I see. I think yeah. I see an impulse. I met Charles um, online anyway. Um, I I playing foil. in the, he played in the Super Gauntlet with us okay. for the yeah. U.S. Um, and I'm trying to think if I got a read on his style. Well, I'm guessing it it was the mirror or it might be stasis because I thought I saw impulse and foil. So. Mm. We'll see if we can figure out in these next few turns. I mean, that could be anything. <laughs> All right, we see Aaron's going for an end of turn up. So he is just smoothing out his draws. There's some parfait in the room. A lot of parfait? <laughs> Seems like it. I don't think it paid super attention, but... Yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, like, that's kind of what you, I would say, like, the two best decks right now kind of are Parfait Oath and then the the Dreadnought deck. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if, uh, which which of those, if any, or um, if something shifts their metagame, like we saw, like, the Stasis, if, if they make adjustments to, based on those matchups that they're expecting. Mm -hmm. Um... I think it is. I think I see. I see, I see a the brain freeze. brain freeze. I think he's might be on, um, medallion. Yeah, but I've also. I mean, like misdirection is not normally a card that I see. That's true. Maybe we, I haven't his list yet. <laughs> maybe he's on that 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 stasis list that just gonna win the mirror. Yeah, I definitely did see that that brain freeze.
All right. Carl is playing. Basis. Okay. <laughs> We've got a, a rematch of what we saw before. Yep. Same yeah. matchup. Okay. <laughs> well, our camera just. Okay. But this time, we won't have any outages. Yeah. So we you get to see all of it. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I get to update. What is being mis the foil, I believe? Or maybe it was. The misdirection was. Are we. I mean, the dreadnought had already resolved, so. Okay. All right, well, here's. that's This is the one nice thing about, like. Is there a boomerang, maybe? Trade misdirection boomerang. No, because you can look at Charles Graveyard as just the. No, like maybe Aaron tried to oh, bring land, land or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... All right, there's gonna be a chain of vapor. Oh, maybe maybe the dreadnought had not resolved; it was still on the stack. I was thinking that since only one mana was tapped from Aaron, that um, it had that. I part... thought a chain of vapor happened. Oh, I guess it did. I'm not sure what's happening because he put the dreadnought in his yard. I would ask. Yeah, we're gonna have, like, we're get, Mike's going on to the floor to see if we can uh, figure out what happened there. And Charles got a black vice against a no hand Aaron Dix, but one card in hand. <laughs> one card. Oh, I think he. I don't know. Yeah, there was a lot happening. You know? It was not Chain of Vapor. It was... He had dazed the Stifle. I think there was... Oh. What was the Chain of Vapor, then? Uh, was that not a Chain of Vapor? He might have chained, and then it got... It got... Um, the Chain, I think, got countered. And then, okay. and then he then let Aaron say, okay, try, uh, and, okay. try and protect your... You're dreading out with a stifle, mm -hmm. and then that got dazed. So, all right, Carl's sitting on a couple black vices here. The chain Dick. of vapor was not resolved. Chain of vapor was attempted on the dreadnought before a stifle was cast. That chain of vapor got countered, okay. and then Aaron okay. went to stifle his dreadnought, and that got countered by daze. So, did he chain it before? Yep, Aaron I think... stifled it. Yep. Okay. Same thing probably would have happened. But. Uh, the benefit to... Well, I was going to say... I don't know if that timing makes it... Anyways, so we're at the spot where there's multiple black vices in play. Uh, so right. this is how Charles is going to try and knock Aaron out. The problem is, is like without a stasis in play, Aaron, most of Aaron's cards are like pretty cheap. Yeah. That like... I guess they either lead to more cards or their counter spells. So that's probably I, he's, he's got I, one dreadnought. I do think it's a tight to, spot because or, I think Thesis should be able to like set up against four cards, you know, in the dreadnought player's hand. You know, because like he can't really, Aaron can't really move his hand up too much. Okay, so. Now there is a stasis in play, and with the mm. Forsaken City, if Aaron's not able to kind of assemble his combo again, I feel like he's in pretty rough shape. Yeah, not a lot of ways for um, Stifle not to deal with a stasis once it's in play. Yeah. And the, like, one black vice sometimes can be, like, really quick, but, like, having two can be real problematic, especially because some of the cards, like, Aaron might have are cards like Gush. And, like, right. not a card you'd particularly want to cast when you're facing against black vice. Thwart, and now... A vision charm on the Dreadnought. And 
and he's going to try to chain the Dreadnought in response to that. And Dreadnought will go back to Aaron's hand. Carl's going to use this opportunity to brain freeze for a few. <laughs> this is, that, was, that was a lot of stack. Um, I think... I'm, I'm going to guess it was around seven. <laughs> I don't know if this is, like, necessary, though. I mean, like, I guess you get to see some of your opponent's deck, but it's pretty standard. But, I mean, like, I think you're probably going to end up killing him with the Black Vice before the Brain Freeze gets there. We'll get him... <laughs> but if they deal with the Black Vice... <laughs> That's true. Then you're definitely in good shape, so... I mean, that's the time you're going to use Brain Freeze, if anything, so... Yeah, the, the brain freeze in the main deck seems unusual to me. Oh, gushing at the end of Aaron's turn. Paper stasis. Do you have you played like the stasis for Shreddot? I know I've watched it played, but I haven't played it okay. myself. Because Will was in the the top of the monthly over there, right? But he yeah he won with stasis, right? He's in the final. I okay. think he's waiting in the finals for the winner of two of them or something like. No, no, no. It's like I think it's like red green versus um, red knot on one side, and Will's waiting for the winner of that. Yeah, it's playing like tomorrow, maybe. Okay, so Aaron's now going for going for a dreadnought under a stasis. But yeah, the problem here is like it doesn't do it, right? Yeah, it like yeah, you could take twelve. And it you're gets still... him under the vice though. Like that's that's a concern. Yeah, okay. Like at least he's playing cards out of his hand. Yeah. It's like one of the few times where you're just like, yep, you can have a, a twelve, twelve. That's fine. I think he should be at. Well, did he take a damage from anything? They had him at nineteen, I I think, but I don't know why. Maybe they thought he took a point of damage from misdirection. Yeah, it was, it was just like <laughs> for, for, for stuff. Just assuming it's a force wall. Okay. Uh. Yeah, that's uh, not something that I considered. That with a tapped dreadnought, you could just play another one and not need a stifle or a vision charm. You could just sack the other one. That's true. That uh, that is a play I've never seen. That's awesome. And would be really cool. Like, I wonder if that's something that like Aaron is thinking of. Like, I I don't know if I would even think of that. You were telling me that you recently played a dreadnought fair. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I had a tog that, um, I attacked with it my ATOG got blocked, and then I needed to have, like, the Dreadnought to block my opponent, and so the ATOG was, like, 13 power, and so I just got to <laughs> cast a Dreadnought and then sack an ATOG, and, uh... uh it's beautiful. I didn't win that game, unfortunately, but... Alright, Aaron gushed, which is gonna put his hand back to an uncomfortable area. Against the vices. The many vices. Yeah. Yeah, the problem here is like if Aaron from the spot under a stasis, a lot of his cards are counter spells or card draw, and there aren't as many lands. He basically needs like the top of his deck to be really good. So here we have Trow going for a chain of vapor on his own stasis. It would also give him the flexibility that he could sack a land and bounce the dreadnought if he's really afraid, but he might not even be that worried about it. 
That is thinking about it. Dude. It'd be well. Like days could be a card that maybe you would want to use, but I guess that would also give you a mana, but in the future turns. I wanna what I wanna know from the chat. Who's the hero here, and who's the villain? I kind of feel like, uh, my personal take is I feel like the Dreadnought deck was very briefly a hero, and now it's already a villain. <laughs> I think it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I've seen it enough that it's it's kind of the villain. And it kind of... Ooh. We see a mana short. That, that mana got short. There are some, some techie choices here. Yeah, I like I like the stasis stack of Charles. Got a, he's got a mana short in it. He has the full four black vices. Um, he's got two boomerangs, one misdirection, and a brain freeze. Those are the spicy ones. The spicy hits. Well, I would say like, I don't know if this is would be his normal list like wherever, or if he thought. That a lot of people play stasis in the, in this area because I mean like having that main yeah. brain freeze seems pretty good. There was a lot of stasis at both of the previous yep. yes uh, both events that we had here. Yes, there were a lot. This is good guy versus good guy. <laughs> here is whoever ends a stasis match quickly. I I don't think that result. I don't think the games actually take that long. Once well, depends on how quick you get your black vices, but yeah. There's, I mean, we haven't gone a lot of turns with nothing happening, and the ones that have have gone pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, so the chain, chain of Vapor got countered. Um, so the stasis is just being upkeeped by the Forsaken City. Aaron did take six damage there on his upkeep. That's gonna... That's going to deal some damage up. quickly, it's yes. Catching up to him. He does have three on tap islands, that's the... I wonder if Aaron... Like, I think that's a out there play, playing the Dreadnought when you have a Dreadnought. Like, it's, it's, it's very non-intuitive, right? <laughs> yes, yes, I will agree. I would, I would blame nobody for not noticing that, but I, I wonder if he's, he's I, sitting with a Dreadnought. I don't think I would see it in the moment. Can we see Aaron's hand? If there is another one there? Wait. There was opt. Did he counter his own opt? I think he did. Was that, was that arcane denial? What else would he want to? Or, or is he just he's, counter? He's just trying to get, he's just trying to get, he's trying to get cards out of his hand. Oh, so it was just normal counter spell. Yeah. I think he dazed or something. I don't know. No, he couldn't have dazed. I think it was counter. It might have been disrupt pay. Mm. I don't know. Because he still he resolved the opt. It looked like no. He well he tapped two mana additional mana. He had three on tap. Mm -hmm. I don't think Dreadnought plays Arcane in that one. No, it doesn't usually. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, he's just trying to stay under that vice, and he's struggling to do that. He's he's one card over right now. I think. Trial exile black vice to. Keep the stasis in play. And... He's gonna vision charm his Dreadnought. So, yeah, this is Locking him out of the 12-12 play. Yeah, this is the interaction that we talked about that it just... It just doesn't come back. Because of... Never coming back. Players skip their untap step and... The vision charm. So, would... If this stasis leaves, does it come back? Yes. Like it would re I remember, so. or is it just like that one one time was that one chance it would remember? Well, I, I think beginning of your turn, anything phased out phases in, right? I don't know. That's just how phasing works, I think. Like it's just, it's like a game rule if, so, okay. if things are phased out. He's got a portent, Charles. He might be portenting before conceding, <laughs> <laughs> which I like. All right, making him shuffle. Is, would that be the ultimate? Just like make him shuffle, and then you concede. Yes. <laughs> yeah, wait till totally they present the deck. Yeah. Shuffle them. <laughs> then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'll show you stasis. I'll show you how to waste time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, phasing happens during the untap, and it yeah. always happens. Okay. Like, can Aaron really even get out of this situation? Boomerang, I guess, yeah. But there's usually only, like, one copy of those. I mean, it probably doesn't have a lot of cards in his hand. and Nor a lot of mana, so... Right, yeah, he's... Oh, okay, I'll, I'll change that. He's definitely his cards in his hand. Charles is kind of running the, the... What I call the brute force version of Stasis. He's running, like, four Arcane Isle, four Forsaken City, four Black Vice, mm -hmm. and he's just, like... Anyway, I can keep the stasis. I'll ditch my hand. I'll, whatever you know. Um, I don't. I don't hate that either. I, I like I, it. I, I kind of like playing playing the deck that style. A lot of people who approach stasis at first don't don't go that way, and sometimes they they find it later. You know. Yeah, because you can set up situations where you like kind of get things down like very early, like turn three. Oh, yeah. Like you if can... you have a first second city, and you're just like. I mean, there's draws where you go turn one vice, turn two stasis. You know, okay. like, and then never, nobody ever untaps again. That's the way yeah. Garfield intended. <laughs> <laughs> and he did intend it because he put it in alpha. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to burn a paradise and still energy back then. Yeah. Have you heard of the format Revised 40? You know what that is? No, what is that? So players build the decks of cards only from revised, um, but you are limited to the, you can only have like five rares and like 10 uncommons, and you can have more than four copies of any common. And so it's really interesting because like there are some really <laughs> wild decks, like people have built the stasis deck with the instill energy and birds of paradise. I, I built for that format <laughs> in in 95. <laughs> I, I, I mean, and your deck is, is only 40 cards. Like, yeah. so, so, like, definitely you get to execute your game plan a lot. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting thing that I've dabbled in. Yes, no, no, they they adjusted it in that format. Oh, Th no. That and, no. and Lightning Bolt. Yeah, they, no. they tried, they used to have Curd 8 at common, and then they eventually said this is too much, because people just played this red-green aggro deck, which is, all, like, only Curd Apes and Bolts yeah. and stuff. So that got upgraded on common, and so is, um... Lightning bolt in that format. Yeah. All right. Meanwhile, we got uh, Aaron is trying to cast a dreadnought, and it is going to get arcane denial. Might be a time where you aren't drawing the additional cards. Right. Yeah. I, I, guessing Aaron's going to skip that draw. Was that game? Did the Wait, did the Dreadnought resolve? I don't think so. I'm just going to go double I check. I think Charo won that. Did Dreadnought win? Okay. Sorry, it was that days. All right, I'll tell Mike that he won when he gets back. Wow, what a win! That's crazy. I can't believe you won that game. I can't believe Aaron won that game. Yeah, uh, I can't believe it either. We got distracted with your revised forty crap. And <laughs> <won this stuff. laughs> yeah, I just assumed with that arcane now that it was getting countered, and um, no, the run out deck. In the hands of Aaron Dix. Take Aaron Dix is amazing. <laughs> well, I kind of just wrote it off. It just seemed like a situation like he was taking damage from the vice, and I just said, okay, he's he's just going to die. We're just going to end up talking about sideboarding or whatnot. Yeah. Um, if he had two vices in play, it looked like he could. Yeah. So are there tools that either player has in the sideboard for this matchup? Do you know? Uh, we, we did see, like, the last time, like, temporal add-up, and, like, uh, we don't have anything like that going so on. From I believe this is Aaron's deck list because i did not see his name okay. you have the deck list all right <laughs> um from charl we're seeing a lot of anti-red he's <laughs> he's got two nls he's got a powder keg um 
bring in that second brain freeze, which I might. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem awful. I mean, I feel like you're kind guess... of you're you're well situated if you're a stasis play for this matchup in general. There's a lot of counter spells, and you have some bounce spells that are really good against uh, the the dreadnought. So, yeah, yeah. Aaron doesn't have uh, anything that looks like too. I mean, I guess a, a null is that the fight you want to fight. There's a mana short, which is kind of interesting. Um, boomerang. I don't know if I I think Aaron probably brings in a null. I mean. Black Vice is his, like, main threat, right? That's true, Blake yeah. It, it, yeah, it gets both the the Black Vice and the Stasis, so. Um, the Mana Short's pretty cool. Do we want to talk about uh, the raffle that's going on? Um, sure. So, so I can, if you type in the chat, exclamation point raffle, it should link you to the Missy Mountain Games, where anyone, so, like, people who are Even watching you can, can participate this. in this, the raffle, but... You want to talk about the the different items and what what happens with people who enter the raffle or like their money? <laughs> well, their money goes in a big pile. Yeah. Which we will Roll greedily up. gaze over <laughs> and then give all of it to a great charity called Briar Patch Youth Services, which is a charity that benefits disadvantaged, mostly homeless youth in the Madison area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what are some of the items that we have for raffle? Well, we have a Balancing Tings deck donated by Wilhurst. Um, balancing Tings, if you're not familiar with it, is just a really cool, crazy deck where you sacrifice all the permanents you have in play and play Balancing Act, and then uh, they have to sacrifice everything they have. And then you hopefully, like... Either play a Terror War or, you know... And your brush up, Or yeah. bring it and your brush yep. up right back into play. Um, we have a slide deck I put together. I kind of, like, built it with um, a lot of me and Will's Misty Mountain games in mind. Um, I'm playing, like, Vicious Factory in it. Um, we're playing a full set of Lava Darts. We got a lot of, like, good fun ofs in there, like a Hammer and a Reckless Abandon. Um, and then... Uh, we have a uh, blue green madness deck that I threw together, um, which uh, does not have survivals and squeeze in it. Instead, it's going for like a gush <laughs> game with foil. Um, but I've 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 I I played a version of this deck a bunch um, a few months ago. I really liked it. Um, and then we also have a Magic the Gathering holiday sweater. Yeah, that that's been the talk of the tournament so far. Size large. Yeah, yeah more people. I think there's more tickets in that one. Maybe I shouldn't tell people that than any of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people are really excited about this sweater. It has all five Mattis symbols on the front of it. Um, and then finally, we have a foil Captain Sisse, also donated by Will. Okay. Yeah, a lot, a lot of cool stuff. Check it out on the site and uh, get some tickets. And if you win, we will ship it to you for free as, yep. long, as, you're, as long as you're in the U.S. Otherwise, we'll work it out, though. <laughs> I was saying, there's a lot of people international that actually still might apply to, so... But... I thought about just saying anywhere in the world, but... It scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, looks like a portent from Aaron. You can tell him to put his graveyard a little closer. Oh, no, <laughs> I guess I can't. Oh, you don't have to do it now, but... <laughs> do you? We can see if the chat cat wants you to move it or not. <laughs> Would you rather listen to Mike or have him move the graveyard closer? Yeah. I can get both. Uh... Yeah. Aaron is shuffling off the port tent, which is All right, always well, something I like to see. Now at least I can com com communicate. I have adjusted. Like, it's because I have the header on the overlay that it's like blocking the graveyard. So, um, But yeah. I can see it if I, on my my end of oh. in the graveyard. But. Can you scoot the screen down a little, or is that that would probably lose the light? I'll just I'll adjust it like in between a round. Um, but yeah, so we'll have it fixed for round three. But for now, we'll we'll just leave it as it is. That's an annul. For a second there, I thought that was a Lord of Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, that is an. That's a counter target artifact or enchantment yep. for one blue mana. A stock just keeps going up on this card. It's so good to pre-modern. Yeah, I mean, like, blue, 
it just it being able to interact with one mana and there's so many targets like so many matchups where it's just like one of your best cyborg cards yeah love and all When I played Sam's Forfait deck, we thought that was a secret weapon of the deck, is that you just got to play four Renals afterward. Alright, so Aaron's going to fight back with Foil, discarding it was Island, and I thought it was off. He's going to Vision Charm. I think we're going to see a daze. Yeah, we have a daze. So, a lot of fighting over this Dreadnought, where ultimately Aaron does not win that fight. So a lot of resources put in there, so that... Yeah. And no permanence in play. <laughs> They're all gonna impulse. I feel like most of the times when I play Stasis, it's like, I want to find Stasis, and then like the rest of it like just doesn't matter. So I I guess there are certain situations where you because I guess the problem is because if you counter do it, spells might be more, more yeah important yeah there are matchup. times but because like does the stasis do that much it yeah it's a lot in Adrian a, Sullivan's yeah, version yeah he has ivory tower that's and fair. he can if he can stall it long enough he can stay alive but I don't know if it I don't know I could almost see burning him out because and stifle not. They don't have any mana anyway. So <laughs> would you would you be interested in, from Charles' perspective of like trying to win a game where you're are you black vicing him, Aaron, if if he's not under a stasis lock? Sure. Okay. So I can see it. I mean most it, of his cards replace themselves. Yeah, I was gonna say it's <laughs> if you're able to resolve that yeah, that that black vice, then like Aaron can't really do too much about it. Carl developing a nice mana advantage. Aaron down to one land? Oh, because he foiled his other land away. Okay, so he's discarding cards. What happens when you go for it? Carl could really use a black vice right now. <laughs> I don't that's, think that's I'd... my expert analysis on the situation. <laughs> All right, second island for Aaron. The one thing that's kind of difficult about the Stifle Knot deck is you got to fear that as so much time goes by that the opponent will have some answer, even if you do resolve it, like a Chain of Vapor or whatnot. I guess, like, multiple copies of a Vision Charm can protect it against Chain of Vapor, but, I mean, it's, it's kind of just like a, a looming feeling of of doubt that it's actually going to work out even if you go right. for it. But... Like you're going to do a lot of work with two cards and they are going to potentially stop that with one mana and one card. Okay, it looks like an annul on this black vice. Carl going to war over it. going to foil. Discarding his stasis and an island. I love how I just don't need to really update the life totals on this match. Your move, Aaron. <laughs> when there was there was one match that was the mono blue stifle not mirror, and literally the only permutations of life could be twenty, eight, or dead. It, like this, <laughs> like there was there were no other creatures. Like yeah. like blocking would just nullify it, so it's not like trample damage came. That's into what play. you want to see in <laughs> hundred. <laughs> um. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're giving it's the people stasis dreadnought. Okay. <laughs> well, we we thought Aaron was on a different deck originally, or BK oh. did when he picked it. So mm -hmm. we didn't know what Charles was on, and he he came from Florida. So but, really, yeah. So do you think it's really interesting the variety of stasis decks? So it's like just the range you can play. I don't know. Check it here, but we have Lester poking his head back. Yeah, Lester Smurling in the booth here. We're, did you were you able to win your second? I round? did. Yes. Okay, so you're you're hanging in there. What'd yeah. you play against? Who do you play I against? I played against Birds of Paradise and Penguin Riders. Okay. Oh man, that's terrible for you. No, you still got. I there. think it is. I got there. No. I would love to. I think. I. I it, did he? Was he survival too? Yeah. I'm guessing he didn't. Did he have the Gilded Drake? He did not Gilded Drake. He had. Uh, yeah, that's the. Copy. That's okay. the hook. Yeah. All right. So meanwhile, we have 
trial with a uh, stasis and the forsaken city mm -hmm. well going for the stasis it looks like aaron wants to aaron looks like he he's he doesn't love he doesn't like having two islands yeah <laughs> well he doesn't like stasis in play either so yeah People are hating on the white border um, impulse. I kind of like it. I, they're hard to get. It, I like it was only made in one pre-constructed product. Yeah, I, you I think. One in and you only got one. Yeah. So I think. here, here is my philosophy: the first white border card that you add to your deck is is not it's desirable. Basis. But once you have one of them, then just it opens up the door. All of them can come in. Like it, then the the rest of them are sweet. So like, I don't expect anyone to have black border stasis or even black border vices or anything. So it's like, as soon as you have that, that one white border, I'm like, bring them all in. White border stasis, white border impulse might be one of the rarest impulses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the foil one. Huh? Okay. The foil promo one. Oh, there's a... There's a foil f and one. Oh yeah, that one's cool. There's a from the vaults one? No. Yeah. No? Or something? Yeah, the, yeah. the one with That's the... New art. Another white board impulse. Those anthologies cards are really hot though. All the basic answer anthology. Yeah, th I think they look cool. So I like them too. I was I was gonna like try and build a, a blue white control deck that just uses as many white border cards as as you could. Because a lot of it, I mean, like impulses and wrath of gods and sorts of plowshares, counter spells, and like. I have a lot of um, goblin mountains in white border. I know Lester's very. Uh, Envious of that. And then I also have a lot of Arabian Mountains and White Border. <laughs> okay. Alright, so the Black Vice is doing a little bit of work. Now we're at 18 for Aaron. Uh, I'm buying cards is always heartbreaking to tell people if they're White Border or Arabian. <laughs> What's up? I'm buying cards is always heartbreaking to tell someone your White Border Arabian is not. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a cool. I can, I can see how Chronicles is my nightmare <laughs> as a store owner because, like, I'm always like worried that they're gonna buy a, a Tormod's Crypt as a dark Tormod's Crypt or something. Uh, I feel, I feel like so many times from people having order issues, they'd be like, "Oh, I ordered the dark Tormod's Crypt," and they get sent to Chronicles one. The so. Zoomers don't know. <laughs> they don't know. You got trying to buy cream, and you could. You teach him a different. It doesn't happen that much, but the non-island land is Forsaken City. I'll bring that one up. Yeah. It's very key in the the stasis strategy. A linchpin. I think it's just sweet when you have a land on, like on its face. It looks just like a terrible card, but then you're like, oh, this works exactly as you want with stasis. So yeah. Perfect city. Mm -hmm. do nothing in <laughs> all right aaron is going to go for the dreadnought which is met with an annul right away so i guess i guess yeah i was gonna say the stifle and vision charm would have to wait for it to resolve i was gonna say could you wait but not with this counter spell not this time Honoring this Dreadnought can be good because, like, they don't have that many in their deck as well. Yeah, they only have the four. They, I don't think they ever have any way to, like, get it back or shuffle it back in. No. Like, often they can have multiple copies of, uh, like, they could have multiple copies of, of Vision Charms and Stifles, but they probably don't have another Dreadnought in their hand. Yeah. So that is that is a, a reason to just go after that Dreadnought with a counter spell. Mm-hmm. I mean, those cards aren't doing much. <laughs> so, <laughs> they don't have a dreadnought. Anyway. Alright. Carl's got a decent amount of mana play. I don't know how many cards he has. He's still got to be a little bit... I, don't, I mean, maybe he's not afraid of a, a dreadnought coming down, but... So... Aaron's at six cards now. Aaron hand size check. Gonna opt. Yeah, that was an opt. 
We consider his options. When opt was first printed in my playgroup, it was opt. <laughs> it's always like the log O. <laughs> Oh, it looks like he he's is, 13, he's yeah, on six now. getting chipped away at the that black light. Like he's on an island though, so he's gonna stay at six. Aaron's kind of gesturing. It looked like he was considering about doing something on that turn. I mean, other than like going for like a dreadnought, is there any other? I mean, the only other thing I think of is like I mean, fighting a boomerang. Gushing. Okay, here we do have a boomerang on the black vice. Yeah. So he might be interested in. It getting bounced and him fighting over that or it, i mean it, it also just is an opportunity for him to get cards out of his hand i was gonna gush it gushing aaron will gush in response so of our picks we took six decks and none of us took a, the the mono blue stifle knot list i know so i, I would say i, I we we might have made a mistake there. We might have a slight oversight because there's at least three people playing it, right? Oh. Yeah. We just got eight minutes left in this round. Yeah. Yeah. There's an arcane denial coming for this boomerang thing. No. Way. No way, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> All right, so we're fighting against the Arcane Denial now, which is trying to counter the Boomerang. Oil discards, a, I think it was a Vision Charm. It's going to give Aaron the ability to get his hand down into a less painful area. Charles, a foil of his own, he discards a chain of vapor. Do you think that means he's got more chain of vapors, or do you think... I, I mean, maybe yeah, it depends on... I would on, guess so. I guess it depends on how... Because obviously it's a safe feeling yeah. when you have a chain of vapor in hand against yeah. a Dreadnought deck. But if you're just trying to kill him with a Black Vice, then maybe it doesn't matter. There's probably there's probably a hierarchy of effects with this deck, right? In this matchup, I would think. I think Chain of Vapor is probably the top of it in my head. I mean, it's like the one thing that you have control of if if things go wrong. Like you can set up your hand as well as you want, but you might lose a counter war still. Yeah. Uh, so the Chain of Vapor is a very. But if you had four Chain of Vapor, is like it's four yeah. counter wars you're gonna yeah. lose, right? Um. We've there's got a brain freeze here. So this was okay. So there's a boomerang. There was an arcane denial. There was a foil. There was a foil. There's two gush. Oh, was it two gush? Yeah, they both played a gush. <laughs> that was seven, and then the brain freeze. So this is twenty four cards. Yeah. Is it, that uh, is a brain. Freeze. A big brain freeze. Big freeze. Carl on about four cards in his hand. Aaron on about five. It looks like. Is this the new way to win with stasis? Maybe, maybe we should just build like a, a deck of, of nothing but catrips and but bounce spells. I would guess in theory, like if you had like two copies of Brain Freeze and you could cut the Black Vice, right? In theory. Sure. Uh, I mean, it makes you, your deck like a little bit more... do you just play consistent. four Brain Freeze, you know? Yeah. I, you well, lose the guys busting, but... Okay. Sure. You could stifle it, though. Uh, but they don't usually play Stifle. I have seen some. But you could. You could. You could play You could play Mono Blue Stifle Knot with Rain Freezes. Well, you could also, like, if your... there's guys busting in the deck, like, just hope, you could just wait till they're, like, at the very end of their deck. Yeah. And hope that they drew all three of them. I like Stroke better. Okay, that's fair. We got Aaron with a counter spell on the stack, but nothing else in play. So can he talk? I don't no? know. <laughs> he has a spell on the stack. Does that, does that count as having something in play? I don't know. I I was I was always like tangential to that like I don't 
I don't think I ever played with those rules. I only heard of them. So was he? Tr did he stifle the freeze? Oh, the storm trigger. So it was going on there. It doesn't make sense. To try. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I was saying. It does like, not make sense to try to counter the brain freeze. I mean, you could counter the copies of it. The but storm no, count's it, already on, so yeah. it's not going to add more. Yeah. That was one thing I didn't realize how it worked. I thought it like <laughs> the, it it set like I thought the storm trigger. Like I thought you could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're flipping cards. One. So there's a two dreadnoughts. I guess this would come down to like whether all the wind conditions from Aaron are, oh, are gone. Seven. So twenty-one. Better, it should be twenty-four. Yeah, because you have to count the brain freeze too. Yeah. Yeah, the the way I thought, like I thought the storm trigger, like would if it hadn't like resolved, I thought it would update, but it it just no, it just counts it like at the time you cast it. Can you imagine how ridiculous that would be though? Because yeah. like you could like, I don't know, if if you had something like threw a card or something, you know, you could, yeah, <laughs> you could just add more storm triggers on top or something. So I think trial takes that one down. Now we're going to. Try to resolve a game in a short amount of time. In three minutes and three minutes ish. I mean, the one thing is the Stifle Knot that could can win that. Oh, game. Aaron can win this. Um, Aaron might have been able to stall that out. Yeah, I don't. But I, mean, uh, I I I like to think that event like this format like pre-modern that we don't bother we don't do that we don't do that around here yeah well you never know we're, we're drawing in a lot of old turn turning grinders you know? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of names in the house today we got uh sam black caleb durward did you do you know what caleb's playing Playing red green survival. Mm, that oh, then he must have been playing a pickup game afterwards because he was not playing those. He was not playing either of those colors when I saw him. Oh, maybe he's not. I don't know. I saw him casting black and white card with like Gerard's verdict and Firebrexine Arena. Mm -hmm. It looked closer to like Dead Ale. Yeah, but maybe it, maybe it was a fun game. You know uh, what deck I've yet to build in this format? <laughs> Dead Guy Ale. I just don't even. <laughs> I'll I'll think about building it sometimes, and I just don't know what to do with it. It's just, it's just like nothing feels good. Oh, you know, I was I, I know the man is bad. But like I always in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'll just play all the black cards and just splash for a Gerard's verdict. <laughs> like yeah, like I don't even know. Like I could play Vendetta over Plow. Obviously, it's a worse card, but like if your mana is that much better, but like I don't know, it might be hard to cast Gerard's verdict on turn two. But I mean, like. I guess Vindicate is another card you might want. Yeah, but most if of the, I play that deck, it's because I want to play Gerard's Bricks and Vindicates. You know. Yeah. But I want to capture that that feeling again. You know. But I feel like most of the other cards, I mean, other than maybe sideboard cards, I guess it just they feel like they're like black cards, like the yeah. Nantuko Shade or the Hypnotic Specter or yeah, and Hyrexian Arena. If I'm playing white though. I'm playing Exalted Angels. <laughs> yeah, that, that's you probably know? that's probably I love that card. Yeah. So good. All right, players are gonna try as Aaron yeah. Mulligans to six. I like Mono Black. I think more than a uh, dead guy in general. All right. I'm gonna check the the round clock because my my number up there is not quite official. We'll see if there's oh, a yeah, difference. Yeah. yeah, there there are time over. So um, that's probably, we, I feel we like might have started them a little bit late. Yeah. So I mean, usually they give a couple of minutes to feature match. I feel like I started it like when they were playing. Oh, but or maybe shortly after. So, all right. Well, Aaron's going for uh, a dreadnought. 
There is... <laughs> foil, foil. Foil, foil. Aaron has an island and a dreadnought. No cards in hand. Is this good enough? Charles gonna gush. Yeah, they looking, gave him four extra minutes. So looking for that chain of vapor deal. He does not find it. All right, Aaron's got some action now. A card in hand. Gonna knock Charles down to eight. And like, if he doesn't have chain of vapor here, right? He's just doesn't have it. And Aaron is gonna win. Yeah, that he passed the stasis deck to two zero. Yeah, that was wild. Now our camera is just it's just an earthquake over yes, there. Yes, it's like the the room is going crazy. They're 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 all yelling, and sh the room is just shaking. It's, everybody <laughs> is so excited about Aaron winning that match. All right, uh, let's. Take a quick break as I will try and make some adjustments to the, yeah, the camera. Yeah, we're going to have to after these guys <laughs> just like... I think Charles will try to flip the table, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, that's not in his range. No. All right, so we will be back shortly. Uh, the time, I think that, that might have been the last match. Uh, so I don't think it'll be very long before we have the next round. Yeah. No, no, no Dreadnought or Stasis next round. That's that's what we'll try and do. All right. So you, I will promise you, no... Decks it, that have nothing but that have only blue so, blue sources for colored mana. All right, we will be back shortly no for round three. Decks. Uh, sit tight, come Thanks on back for, watching. for no blue magic next round. <laughs>